Hello YouTube, hope you guys are doing great. Lately I've been experimenting with a physics engine called Canon.js and I thought it would have been fun to combine it with React and Tree.js in this little fun scene where we have a racetrack and some of the elements of the scene act as colliders like the trees, the signs, and there's also a ramp that you can use to propel you in the air and do some cool flip tricks because we can control the angular velocity of the car while it's in the air. And we also have a toggable third-person camera view. And by the way, I'm absolutely terrible at playing my own creation, but more on that later. The entire project is between four to five hundred lines long. You can get started and finish it in less than one hour by watching these tutorials. And I'll leave links in the description of the video for you to check out the repo on GitHub and for you to try this project live on your browser. I hope you guys will enjoy it. I surely did. And having that said, let's get started. I'm going to run Visual Studio Code as usual, and the very first step will be to initialize the React application by running the create react app command. Once that's finished, we'll have to install a bunch of dependencies. FreeJS and React Tree Fiber will be the most important ones. Then there is a set of utility functions for React Tree Fiber that's called Dry, and our physics engine called Canon.js. It's important that you save the exact version of the libraries that I'm downloading here because this space moves very quickly and I want to make sure that we are using the same versions. Okay, now that we have all of our dependencies, I'm going to delete every file under the public folder except index.html and I'm also going to remove everything from the source folder. After removing everything, I've created two new files, index.css and index.js. Index.css is just adding some simple rules to make sure that the app runs in full screen and index.js is just trying to render the canvas component from React Tree Fiber which is doing some setup work behind the scenes to initialize our Tree.js environment. It's important that we wrap all of our Tree.js scripts under the Canvas component since we can't use React Tree Fiber hooks outside of Canvas and that's the reason why I'm referencing a new scene component which doesn't exist yet and that's what we're about to create now. And here's the scene component. Throughout the project, we'll have to download a bunch of 3D assets and the suspense block will come in handy while we're waiting for these assets to be downloaded. The first element of a FreeJS scene will be the 3D background that we can create with the environment component. And before I tell you where to download this file, I wanted to briefly mention that we have a perspective camera and you can change its position with this argument. And the camera can be moved around thanks to the orbit controls component which makes the camera look at a specific point in space defined by the target property. Now you'll have to download the environment map, you can find it under the textures folder of the official repo of the project. I'll publish this link in the description of the video and once you open it you just have to click download and you'll be good to go. Once we've downloaded the environment map we can place it under the textures folder and then we can run npm run start on the terminal to take a peek at the simple scene that we've made and make sure that everything so far works as expected. If all went well, you should see a simple blurred background that you can move around with your mouse and that will, that will mean that everything that we've done so far works okay and we can move to the next step. Oh and before I forget, we also need to set up the homepage property under package.json. This will make it possible for your app to run under a subfolder of your website and not necessarily at the root folder. We'll move our focus to the track component, but before I explain you what it's doing, we have to download the 3D model for the track, which is a GLB file, and its texture. You can download the car model under the models folder of the same repo that I've shared for the uh, environment map texture, and within the textures folder, you have to download track.png as well. And once we have the model and the texture, we can use the use loader hook from React Tree Fiber, which automatically suspends the components until all the assets have been downloaded. And once we have the color map texture, we also have to set the anisotropy property to 16. This helps the filtering of the texture when we're looking at it at grazing angles. Should be told, there's not that much that you have to know about this property, but for completeness, I'll mention that when I've made the model in Blender, the texture was made in such a way that would highly benefit from the anisotropy property to be set to 16. And this is just a way of improving the quality of the texture when we are looking at it at grazing angles. And there's nothing else that you have to know about this. 
Every mesh in 3JS needs a geometry and a material. And what I'm essentially doing here is taking the geometry that is inside the mesh that was downloaded with the use loader hook. Normally in React Tree Fabric, this is how you would create a mesh. You would give it a geometry as a child and a material. React Tree Fiber is then smart enough to understand that these are part of the mesh and it will assign these properties to the underlying mesh components in 3JS. But if our geometry was made somewhere else, in this case in the model that was downloaded with use loader, then we have to use a different construct to inject the geometry inside our mesh component. The primitive construct really comes in handy here because we can take an already existing geometry object and assign it as a property of the mesh. This is essentially the same as doing mesh.geometry and then we're assigning this object here that's referenced as a property of the primitive component. Now we just have to include the track component inside our scene and if we run the project, we should be able to see both the model and the texture applied and we can orbit around the scene with our mouse. Next, we'll take a look at the ground component and we have to download three new textures, grid.png, ground.io, and alpha map. You can find these textures in the same repo, same folder where we downloaded the environment map.hdr file. Similarly to what we've done for the track texture, we also have to increase the anisotropy property of the grid map. And then we're creating the mesh component for the ground. We're doing this one the standard way by just applying a geometry and a material as children of the mesh. We also need a reference to this mesh object because as soon as it becomes available, we have to edit some of the properties of its geometry. And long story short, the reason why I'm doing this is because some of the textures that we're going to supply to this material require a new set of UVs that I'm creating here with these two lines. And now comes the interesting part, supplying all the properties to mesh reflector material. The beauty of this material is that it will make our ground reflect all the objects that are above it. And I would be lying if I told you that I know what all of these properties are doing. But this is the setup that I've found that works best for this project. You can edit these properties and play with them to your liking and find a better preset that you like if you want. Now we'll just have to import the ground component here. And our scene is already looking great, look at that. The reflections that are being created by the ground component are really cool, especially because they're blurred and they give the impression that the ground is some form of rough metal reflecting the objects at the surface, but in such a way that they end up being blurry when you're seeing them in the browser. And you could keep it like this if you wanted to, but the original scene also had another mesh on top of the ground component that was textured in such a way that it would show a grid of lines, of white lines, on top of the scene, and that's what we're going to add next. And to do that, we can create a simple mesh component and assign it a plane geometry. We'll also make a new mesh basic material that is going to be transparent. And when a mesh, and when a mesh basic material is transparent, we can also use an alpha map to assign a texture to this material. In this case, it's going to be the grid map texture to determine which part of the geometry is going to be opaque and which part is going to be transparent. Similarly to what we've done for this other mesh, we'll have to create a reference object that I'm assigning here and then basically apply the same fix that I'm using for the other mesh where I'm creating a new attribute for its geometry. And that's the final result, which I prefer to the one that we had before, but feel free to remove this grid if you don't like it. Lastly, I want you to download the car model, same repo, same folder that we're already using for the track. And the car component is really simple. We're going to download the mesh with use loader. And as soon as it's available, we'll have to scale it down quite a bit because the original mesh uh, object that was created in Blender is much bigger than the ones that we have already downloaded. And I'm also positioning it closer to the center of the scene. And once we have it, we can inject it in React Tree Fiber's scene graph with the primitive component. Don't forget to import it here. And that's the result so far. We have the track, the reflective ground, a little card that is ready to be thrown around after we apply a bunch of physics rules on it. And that will be the topic of the next part of this small series. We've already reached the 10 minutes mark on this video, so I'll stop it right there. And I hope to see you on the next one. I guarantee you that this project is really fun and it shows how the React Tree Fiber ecosystem gives you all the tools necessary to bring this stuff to life with very little effort. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.